Well, hello, friends. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep that for the future videos, but yeah. Here we are with a another Serenity OS video, and uh, this time it's kind of a joke that we did like a couple of days ago on the Discord server, and I'm pretty sure you've read the title. It's about Serenity OS speedrunning, speedrunning Serenity OS, but I mean, the idea is that you cause certain issues in the system because it's a really buggy system as fast as possible. Um, and just to start off the Serenity OS speedrunning scene, I want to propose some rules and I want to do some Serenity speedruns. I've only done some, some minor routing and I've already discussed this with a couple of other people who have had really great ideas about how to route certain categories. So um, that's what I will also talk about today. So first of all, of course, there is any percent and for any percent we must define what we mean by complete the game, quote unquote, as fast as possible. And in case of Serenity, because it's a buggy system, it's causing a bug in the system as fast as you can possibly do that. Any percent is just bug percent. If you want to create a category bug percent, whatever, um, that's just causing a bug. First of all, about the rules. You have to use master, which means that maybe over time certain speedrun categories will increase in duration. And of course the challenge for us developers is to make the speedrun as hard as possible. You have to uh, go with master, you have to use the standard GCC toolchain, and you have to use either the x86 or the x8664 build. And you have to use meta slash serenity.sh uh, run. You have to have no environment variable set. So for example, you're not allowed to give the system extra cores or extra memory. Um, you're, you're just allowed to use the default option for like the best QEMU, for example, like I'm on Windows, so I need the uh, native Windows QEMU. That's totally allowed, but nothing else. Um, and also, of course, you are not allowed to have anything in your sync local. You're not allowed to have a modified system that has some configuration set beforehand. And that's important because actually the very first category, bug percent, relies on a bug in magnifier that I'm going to show in just a minute. And it's much, much faster if you already set all of the settings that we need for the setup. Time starts on your first input into the virtual machine. So right now, as you might be able to see, I have a um, hand cam here and you can see that I'm currently just waving over the keyboard and the mouse but I'm not touching them. And you can see with QEMU there will be a small text here, press Control alt g to exit grab and only if that appears um, mouse input is actually captured. So for example if I were to um, actually do a speedrun I would prepare myself to click into the window and start my timer. So I'm just going to demonstrate that by clicking and then I want to start the timer and then I would quickly do whatever I need to do. Then I, I'm, I'm now also of course allowed to touch the keyboard. For any percent I'm using a very nice bug um, that I think I just found accidentally while trying to route. So we have to open settings. The fastest way is probably to type settings if you can type that fast. We have to open the display settings and then choose a 2x scale, press OK. And then of course we have to quickly move the window in and apply the settings. 2x scale is necessary because the next thing and actually the final thing we need to do is open the magnifier utility. And that will actually be incorrect. If you see, I don't actually have to drag that on screen. You can see that it doesn't focus the cursor correctly in in 2x scale. And that's just a very simple and very obvious bug that nobody can argue is a bug. Magnifier should always center around the cursor and it's not doing it here. So that's clearly a bug. So as soon as you have magnifier open and the cursor is not in focus in magnifier, that's when you can stop your timing. So of course, um, whatever timing method you use, even if you use like timing afterwards, it's um, absolutely up to you. There's not really a way of doing this with live split. Maybe you can set up that. I don't actually have live split installed. So yeah, that's uh, that's any percent. That's bug percent. I'm now going to, of course, try to set 
like a first world record for this category obviously nobody has ever attempted this so of course every time i set uh, every personal best i set will immediately be a world record okay so the system doesn't retain any settings so let's try to do that as a speed run three two one go oh shit i misclicked and that's way too much oh that's such a bad time loss such a bad time loss time okay that was about 13 seconds i paused there way too late i have 13.89 on my timer so yeah that's that's just absolutely horrible try that again maybe i'll see maybe i'll edit these together so of course i'm, I'm leaving also my left hand of the keyboard um, so that you can clearly see that I'm not pressing any keys and in the screen recording of course you can see that I'm not actually in the QEMU window while moving the mouse currently so I can wait and see until the system has completely booted up which it has now um, three two one and let's go here do that and up Apply settings, utilities, oh god, time. And that was about a second faster. I would say that was like 12.3, 12.4 seconds if I hadn't hadn't fumbled for pressing it. I should I should just like while hovering over going over to magnifier, I should just be like ready to to press the um press the stop button. But anyways, um, I think that's enough. So I'm going to I'm going to retime that in post, and I'll put the exact time on screen right now, so that uh, you have a baseline against which to compare. So let's talk about the next category, which is crash percent. Crash percent means that you um, have to crash a certain application or any application as fast as possible now the crucial thing and i think i forgot to mention that is that you're allowed to install ports especially some of the categories actually are made like kind of convenient through ports although they're not technically impossible without ports and um, but like all of the crashes all of the panics all of the stuff that you fuck around with is doesn't have to be caused by ports sorry um you're just allowed to use ports in your process. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you want to write an application that will uh, cause a certain crash, you're absolutely allowed to do that and use the GCC port to compile um, that, um, that application. Because of course, after all, the crash will not be caused by GCC. It will be caused by a native Serenity binary that you actually wrote in Serenity itself, which is absolutely legal. Of course, now if we're talking about crash percent, the easiest and fastest crash that uh, we have found and that I, I, I didn't find, someone else found it. I'm sorry, I can't remember who that was. That was in the Discord when we were discussing different strategies. Someone uh, told me about this very cool and simple um, crash that is really fast to execute. So in fact, I am going to do a speed run of it right away because it's, it's really easy and you will immediately see how it goes. So three two, one. Time. Okay, that was 12 and a half seconds, about as fast as the back percent or any percent, which is actually funny. I think I can even improve um, improve any percent by by actually using using a crash instead of a bug and th that's uh however you want to define any percent exactly so and um, of course timing stops whenever the crash report pops up inside serenity not when the actual backtrace pops up outside of serenity um, which also means that we would benefit from s people making the crash reporter faster because then the crash reporter would appear faster. So of course, what I just did was I opened file manager, uh, maximized the window, closed the window and tried to open file manager again. And that's a bug currently that it will crash if you try to do that. I think I'm going to set another time. I'll be back in just a minute.
go. And the timer, and that's again 12 and a half seconds apart. So I think I can't get it any faster. I'm just really terrible at clicking fast. Um, but I'm pretty sure you could improve on that, of course, with a better machine, maybe. I don't know. The next one is web page crash percent. And web page cra crash percent is simply you have to cause a website to crash as fast as possible. You're not allowed to crash the browser, or you're allowed to crash the browser, but that doesn't count. If not, all of the web content processors also crash and if they're not just normally closed. So the, the easiest way or the way that everybody will believe your time is just to crash uh, a web page. And in fact, I happen to know that I think currently GitHub, the Serenity OS GitHub page crashes in a relatively fast time, like three or four seconds. So I'm going to attempt to do that now. Three, two, one. A few moments later. Okay, that's taking way longer than expected. Maybe my route was just broken on the newest commits because I pulled just before starting the recording. Okay, let's let's try that again. So you know that maybe sometimes um, certain websites crash, certain websites don't crash, or they just like randomly um, will do one thing or the other going to try with Google this time. Three, two, one. And that's time. Um, oops, that's 10 seconds. I mean, um, web page crash percent is actually any percent, I just realized. So that was really simple. Um, of course, timing stops as soon as the browser displays the web page crashed page. Um, and I was a bit slow with the timing there, but it's about 10 seconds. Let's look at the final category. And this is actually, I think, the fun, the most fun category. It's kernel percent. It's uh, causing a kernel panic as fast as possible. This was actually the most most fun category to route, but also the easiest because it's it's actually there are actually quite a lot of obvious things that you could do you could deprive the system of memory um, i tried that it doesn't really work the system is kind of resilient i would come up with, have to come up with a complicated program that i'll have to type um, from my mind or from like something i have on screen besides me i'm going to immediately attempt the speed run but what i'm going to do is create a simple fork bump um, program in hex studio with c Again, for this, I need the GCC port and the make port, but those are not themselves going to cause a kernel panic, so it's legal. It's legal if the kernel panic happens over here in the serial console. That's because not all kernel panics allow the kernel to still have enough storage to print this to the VGA frame buffer. Um, I've actually, previously when I tried this, I had only with this kind of program I had only had the kernel panic um, so yeah that's that's something you have to you have to keep in mind I've mentally prepared myself I've remembered all the key combinations of the English keyboard the hashes on the three okay three two one go hack studio let's immediately try and create a new project that is called a okay Okay, and then we immediately go and include unistd.h and do a while true fork and um, that is extremely slow, but I am going to take it and there we are. And I clicked just a second too early and that's a really, really fast crash. That was like gaining me a bunch of time that it crashed immediately instead of like taking a bunch of time. Okay. That was 45 seconds. As you can see, kernel percent is of course one of the slower categories. 
And I'm 100% sure that you can improve on this, like just by the nature of me typing really slow and not being used to an English keyboard. To be honest, this is all just a big joke and I'm not willing to put in the time to route an unimportant speedrun category in a speedrun that I just invented. So let's call it at that. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.